You know, in life, we make choices. And one of the choices that I had to make back in high school was, what was I gonna do with my Friday nights? I could play on the football team, or I could march in the marching band. Now, having a pretty realistic appraisal of my own athletic ability, I chose the marching band. Played sousaphone in my high school marching band. Never got a concussion probably never got as much attention from the cheerleaders as I might otherwise have, either. Although there was this one time in band camp, <laughs> but I digress. You know, learning statistics and playing in the marching band are very similar. Okay, no, they're not. But playing in the marching band did give me an idea about a better way to teach statistics, illustrating something that we're going to spend a lot of time talking about, the normal distribution. You see, the normal distribution is the most important distribution in all of statistics. We're going to use it extensively. And the reason why the normal distribution is so important is because so many human measures fall into this normal or bell-shaped curve, such as height. And that's the example that I want to use today. So imagine that we invite all of our band nerd friends to come down to the marching band practice field early one morning in the late summer. Because you know, that's exactly where we love to be at 6.30 in the morning, two weeks before high school starts. But again, I digress. We have the marching band practice field painted to look like a regular football field. So we have sidelines and yard markers, except this morning there is one thing that is different. Along the sideline, at every yard marker, is a sign. And on that sign is a number. And that number represents height. We ask all of our band nerd friends to find the sign on the yard line that best represents their height. And then go stand in that row. Now, quick digression about assumptions. If you're working on your dissertation, you need to identify the assumptions of your research. If the assumptions have been violated, that could explain why things didn't work in a research project. The assumption that we're using for this example is that each person knows his or her own height and that each person has the cognitive and linguistic ability to read the signs and stand in the proper line. Now that's not a stretch, but it is an assumption because we know that band nerds are notoriously smart. I'm just saying. But we also cannot control whether or not they accurately measure their own height and know which line to stand in. What can happen when research goes pear-shaped is the assumptions were violated and we need to go back and figure out what went wrong. So again, just a quick digression. Now, all of the band are standing on the practice field, each in a line appropriate to their own height. The signs range from five foot zero to five foot five, five foot six, six feet tall, six one, six two, up to seven feet tall. Each height has a space on the sideline. Now, what we do is walk up to the band leader podium where we can look down over the practice field and what we are going to see is, most likely, a normal distribution. We will most likely be able to find one line that is longer than the others. And do you know why that line is longer than the others? Because there's more band nerds in that line. The lines on either side of that longest line will be slightly shorter, but still among the longest lines in our distribution. The lines on either side of those lines will again be slightly shorter, and the lines outside of those slightly shorter still. As we get further from that longest line, we're going to find shorter and shorter lines until eventually 
we have a sign with no one standing next to it. That would be the tail of our distribution. It's also possible that we find one person standing further out away from the bulk or the body of the curve. That person's score lies out further. That person would be an outlier in terms of height. It's also quite possible that we will discover as we look down from our band director podium at the distribution on the field that there is an overlapping distribution. Perhaps our distribution is bimodal. Knowing that Homo sapiens are a sexually dimorphic species, men tend to be taller than women. And so we may find one distribution of male heights and a second distribution of female heights. Now we're going to do one more thing. We take a garden hose, you know, the kind that we use to water the practice field to keep the grass growing. And we run that garden hose around the last person in each row. And once we have it in place, we have them lay that garden hose down on the field and now everyone comes off the field, leaving the garden hose lying there on the field. And what we will see is the shape of the normal distribution. If we were in class, I would probably illustrate it this way. What I have here are pipe cleaners. These are easy to find on any internet site that sells things, none of whom are paying me to do this video, so I won't mention them by name, but you could probably figure it out. Um, I think that one will show up well on camera. Here's what I would do in a classroom. I would say, pretend that this is that garden hose I mentioned before and see if you could fashion that into something that looks a little like a normal curve. And there we go. It's not going to be perfect, doesn't have to be, but it will give us a sense for what a normal curve looks like. What we're going to see is the height of the curve. This would be furthest away from, we'll say that's the sideline, the part, I shouldn't use that finger, the part furthest away from the sideline or the curve is going to be the top of the curve, the most frequently occurring score. That will be the mean. Less frequently occurring scores occur in the tails to either the left or to the right. Unlike the curve that I've just made, a true normal curve is an idealized, smooth, continuous curve. It is actually a curve that doesn't exist in the real world, but one that we have created mathematically. It is symmetrical, which means that the left and the right half of the curve are mirror images of each other. In a normal curve, the mean equals the median equals the mode. This top part of the curve, that is the most frequently occurring score, more people in that line. It's also the median, the middle score, and if we were to add up the height of everyone in the band and divide by the total number of band members, mathematically that would be the center as well. Mean equals median equals mode in a normal curve, which is also something we can use later on to establish or test whether a curve or distribution is normal. If those three measures of central tendency line up with each other, we're probably dealing with a normal curve. So this in the middle is the body of the curve. This is a tail of the curve. What we're going to be able to do as I teach you about the qualities of a normal curve is see what happens or why a tail might get pulled out in one direction and what effect that would have if we had more variability or less variability in our curve. One more idea. The less frequently occurring scores are going to be in the tail of the curve. Most frequently occurring scores are in the middle of the curve, the body of the curve. However, if there is a score that is very different from most people, in other words, we have a person who is six foot five inches tall, that person may be an outlier in height. Their score lies out further than a typical score. 
So with this introduction to a normal curve, we're ready to start talking about the other qualities of our distributions. I mentioned in a previous video that when you have any distribution, there are four questions that we want to ask. Let's review. The first question that we want to know about any distribution is where is the center of the distribution? What measure of central tendency best defines this distribution? The second thing we want to know, how close together or spread out are the scores? Which measure of variability best describes this distribution? The third question is whether or not the distribution is symmetric. Does the left half of the distribution look like the right half? Are they mirror images? And the fourth question that we want to answer is about the thickness of the tails of the distribution. The question of whether the scores in the distribution are symmetric will be answered with our measure of skewness. And the question about the heaviness of the tails of the curve will be answered with kurtosis. Skewness and kurtosis are what we're going to talk about next.